at once, exile. Make your choice. A simple ultimate. Leave with your life and a meager reward. Or risk it all for a chance at ungodly riches. For each trial you accept, the challenge grows. But fail. your deeds 
felt their shockwaves ripple through the void. You have our attention. Now you must keep it. Your limits will be tested. The stars themselves will bear silent witness. How far will you bend? guys Dante here back with another little video and in this one I want to showcase the build that I'm currently playing and it uh, it's one of my favorite if not my absolute favorite archetype in PoE and that is the cast on crit uh, play style it doesn't have to be cyclone like if you look on my channel you can see like a lot of cast on crits like bow builds, cyclone builds and stuff like that so uh without further ado let's get right into it i am a level 93 occultist um the build just want to let you know that the build is not min maxed is not perfect it still has a lot of room for improvements but this is like just the bare bones of it okay like for example you can see like cold my cold race is not the highest one so basically that wise oak doesn't do anything I'm crit cap without the flask, so we're gonna get into that when we get into the POB section. But let's get right into it. So cast on crit, how does it work? Cast on crit, we are using cyclone to trigger cast on crit. Now cyclone does not need to do any damage; it just needs to hit and it needs to crit, and then it procs with cast on crit. It procs the spells that it's linked to. And in our case, it's ice nova, anomalous ice nova. It's one of the better ones for. Um, the additional effect from quality it has 30 percent increased damage with hits against chilled enemies which is the best quality ice nova that you can get now uh so in order for you to get a proper cast on crit experience you need to have like a few things going for you you need attack speed um accuracy crit chance and cooldown recovery rate now let's get all into that right so in order for you to have a good experience, you need to have like some CDR, um, 
like uh, minimums and maximums okay so um if you are pushing a attack speed of your cyclone that is under 6.6 .6 attacks per second you do not need any cdr if your cyclone attack speed exceeds 6.06 .06 attacks per second then you need a minimum of 14 uh, percent cooldown recovery rate now you can go with 14 percent cooldown recovery rate all the way up to 7.57 7, but not above just under 7.57 7. if you exceed 7.57 7 attacks per second then you need a uh, 52 percent cooldown recovery rate right in order to not lose damage if you're missing some cdr and your attack speed is above the minimum requirement for your cdr then you're gonna lose damage and not a little bit of damage you're gonna lose a lot of damage even like half of your damage so you need to pay very close attention to that okay now thanks to the new passive tree and masteries we can use some gems that previously we couldn't use and get more damage without like so much investment uh but yeah uh, I'm gonna get into the CDR and attack speed and that in uh, just a second. Let's get into the gear first. So, for our main weapon, we are using Cosprism as a unique sword that uh, triggers a socket uh, called spell on melee critical strike. Um, this is like the best weapon for this build. There's no questions about it. There's no reason to check for another one. This is what you want. Uh, I just have an influence because that's how I got it. You don't need an influence. Okay, for the gloves, they are very basic, but sadly they're very expensive if you want double res uh, and good ES. Because we are rolling low life, we need a lot of uh, ES, right? So, this one has a T1 flat, a crafted ES, and it has double uh, high res and energy shield recharge rate. Now, the ideal glove would have like double res and accuracy as a third suffix, or an open suffix where you can craft aspect of the spider. For prefixes, you want a lot of ES and probably an open prefix and then Warlord slam it so you can get spell damage or stuff, something like that. Or Warlord uh, or Hunter slam it and get uh, a nerve or something like that, okay? Good. For the belt, it is a basic crystal belt, Crusader influence, and it has just res and ES. Um, the... This is all going to depend on your build if you can find resistances in other places. But if you have resistances in other places, in the suffixes, you could instead take like a spell damage during flask effect. You can get the shaper or crusader CDR and not the crafted one. And again, if you got an open suffix, just um, craft aspect of the spider or whatever, whatever you're missing. Okay. How to craft this is basically you just get the base and then spam dense fossils until you get something that you're happy with. This is what I got. It took me about maybe like 200 uh, fossils to get this, but it was well worth it because it's pretty thick, as you can see. Now, for the boots, I am using a double influenced tailwind and cooldown recovery pair of boots and sadly it hit t7 lightning res which i'm not really happy about and no yes but what can you do you can't have them all uh in order to craft this pair of boots you need to awaken the orb a tailwind mod with a cooldown recovery mod now there's a little trick here if you do not want to have a crafted cdr on your belt you can elevate the cooldown recovery and that's going to give you enough cooldown recovery rate without the belt so to have the 52 percent okay so keep that in mind uh, that's again it depends all of your on your budget uh, the best enchant for this would be damage penetrates uh, enemies elemental resistances if you haven't killed recently that's the best for single target damage and probably overall because like clearing is not an issue for the ring, I am using a Circle of Fear with cold damage while affected by Herald Device, and Herald Device has increased buff effect. Um, and the Implicit is like the cheapest one I could find. If you have the money, get like non-channeling skills, have minus mana cost, plus one power charge, spell damage per power charge, um, accuracy, and stuff like that. For the amulet, it is uh, Presence of Chiula with uh tranquility anointed on it nothing too special for the um, shield i'm using a prism guardian which allows us to go low life 
who reserve like the major auras hatred, discipline, and zealotry in this, and is gonna reserve life instead of mana. Okay. Uh, if you got the money, then plus two AoE or plus two auras is probably the best corruption you can get. That's gonna boost your sing your damage and survivability because it low it um, raises the level of all the gems, right? For the helmet, this is again a very basic helmet. I just um, awakened nearby enemies have minus nine cold rest plus plus one power charges, and I got the regen, which is like eh, not great. I actually, it's not good at all, but you know, what can you do? And then I multi modded and then crafted ES, and now it's a pretty thick helmet, like 271 ES with all the mods that I need. Ideally, I would like to have an open suffix to craft aspect of the spider because I'm still lacking it. Uh, so that's why I said that the build is not like min maxed or finished yet. And for the other ring, I am using a crafted shaper ring with a senses mark, accuracy, dex, and like prefaces kind of suck, but what can you do? Okay, for the flask, I'm using a Cinder Swallow with, pay attention, uh, reduce mana cost of skill during flask effect and recover energy shield when you kill an enemy during flask effect. Okay, now, uh, to my knowledge, GGG has uh, increased the mana cost of spells supported by cast on crit, and this is kind of tricky to get around so you can have a pleasant experience. Uh, on single target, I am still struggling from time to time, but nothing a good mana flask can fix, and um, yeah. If you don't want to use this Cinder Swallow flask and get a normal flask, there are multiple ways to get through it, and I'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, a uh, Alchemist Diamond Flask of Penetrating, which is uh, um, reduced duration, increased effect, and crit. I use this until I manage to get crit capped without the flask. As you can see, I'm not using a Bottle of Faith. I am crit capped just by having 7 power charges, and I'll get to that in the POB. Okay, for the skills, I am using Phantasmal Frostbolt, with the Frostbolt which gives a 20% chance to return to you, combined with Frostbomb and GMP. GMP works only with Frostbolt, but it's pretty cool because it just goes everywhere and lets uh, Ice Novas and uh, Vortexes go everywhere. It's pretty cool. It does tank your frame rate a little bit, not gonna lie. In my gloves, I'm using Hex Touch, Arcane Surge, Frostbite, and Vortex. We're only using two curses because we only got one base curse from uh, like everybody and one additional curse from our Ascendancy. In the gloves, I'm using Anomalous War Banner because this gives a lot of accuracy. Like, if you get accuracy on ring, gloves, or helmet, you probably won't need this and you're, pro you're gonna have room for something else. But without this, I am not hit capped. If you can see, I am 90% chance to hit, which is bad. You definitely want to be 100% chance to hit. So, until I fix my accuracy from some other means, I am using Anomalous War Banner. Uh, Diverge Blood and Sand. Diverge Blood and Sand is like normal Blood and Sand, but for spells. This is like big damage, it's like maybe like 400k in POB or something like that. It's pretty good. Uh, awaken Unbound Ailments and Summon Skitterbots. Okay, in the like I said, in the shield we're using our big auras, which is hatred, discipline, and zealotry. And in the helmet, arrow device, divergent precision. I tried to get like the anomalous one, but I didn't get it. So this is what I got. Uh, level one clarity for a watcher's eye, which we'll get to in a minute. And divergent frost, frost, frost blink as our movement skill. I took it because it's like very thematic with the ice team and stuff like that. You can use like dash, flame dash, or whatever it whatever floats your boat. Okay. And in the main links, I am using anomalous inspiration just for more crit. Uh Phantasmal Cyclone, so I don't get stunned, although we are stunned immune from the amulet. But I bought this in case I want to go CI, dish the amulet and do something else, so I, it's gonna get easier to stun cap. But you can use like the other uh, the normal cyclone on any other uh, quality. I am using Awaken Cast on Crit, which, to be fair, it is very expensive at the moment, but this, uh, this combined with the Tree Masteries, with the Passive Tree Masteries, gives you 31% cooldown recovery rate. Now, if I take it out, you only see that it gives you, that's right, 22 cooldown recovery rate. Just by getting 3 levels, you get 31. That's big. So, that's what I said. If you get elevated cooldown recovery on boost, which goes up to 20, 
and you have like um 31 here that's like 51 right and then you can get one abyss jewel with cooldown recovery rate and then you don't need the craft on a belt which is pretty cool pretty pretty cool indeed um i'm using anomalous ice novel like i said is the best one increase critical damage this is probably your best gem until you get a plus two aoe shafts once you get the plus two aoe shafts this will fall off and the weakened added call will be better now uh, i'm kind of poor and i didn't buy awakened added cold but that gives me like 600 to 700 k dps more right just because it's just because you got the plus two aoe and ice nova scales very well with levels and then you got increased critical strikes which helps gives you a lot of crit right because it benefits also from the passive tree modifiers uh masteries and it's now a level 23 if you get it 21 and uh, you get it you get the masteries it's level 24 which gives you even more quit which is splendid so the rest of the flask are like your basic movement speed flask wise oak that does nothing like i said because uh my res is not fixed and a mana flask to help me in like the own sh you know situations okay so that's the gear gem flask let's hop into the skill tree now what do we got here initially i went over here Take the attack speed and stuff like that but i was struggling so much with um accuracy and crit so i respect the tree uh i went here and got another cluster combined with this and then i went here and let's get into like the itty bitty right so as you can see we are using a thread of hope here which allows you to allocate passive trees that are not connected to the tree i am taking four passives here heart of ice which is big damage, Essence Surge, big ES, Arcane Focus, big ES, and Blast Radius. It's like AoE and area damage. You do not need this, but this is like more like a preference, I guess. You cannot take this and allocate it somewhere else. We'll see. Like I said, the build is not done, but I just want to give you like what's going on at the moment. Okay, now, uh, over here, I am using a Militant Feint Converted by High Templar Dominus. Now, pay close attention. You need to have it under Dominus. I've I've used this in previous builds in the past. And people kept asking me, like, uh, why am I having mana issues? Why am I having this? Because the other 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 um, Militant Fades, they give you another Keystone, not Inner Conviction, right? So you, Inner Conviction gives you 3% more spell damage per power charge. And you cannot generate frenzy charges so it has to be a militant fate by high templar dominus not anybody else dominus um yeah that's about it and over here i am using a unnatural instinct i don't know the price of this anymore it's 3x very cheap compared to other leagues it gives you a lot just look at it, it gives you 80 percent spell damage attack speed accuracy max life mana regen life on kill movement speed prosh damage reduce mana cost of links which we don't use but it gives you dex and in it's pretty it, it's a really good position for an unnatural instinct right there okay cluster jewels uh blanket and snow blast freeze disorienting display now uh this should not be too expensive because it's not like the omega meta ones okay they're expensive never mind they're expensive never mind blanket and snow is the one that you want because it gives you 10 percent cold damage uh penetration blast freeze i found it's amazing for especially for this league mechanic because freezes you inflict spray to other enemies it's big like this is like the build is not very tanky the main thing that's keeping us alive is freeze and chill and blind that's it uh and the sort in display for the blind now you can get one of these which is widespread destruction blanket of snow and snowstorm and you don't allocate snowstorm and you just go sideways right it doesn't matter this one what it is it doesn't have to be widespread destruction it can be something else but if you get snowstorm snowstorm is usually on the top which means you can be skipped okay 
Now, uh, about the mediums. Mediums, I am using crit ones with basics of pain pressure points, basics of pain pressure points, and guess what? Basics of pain pressure points. Just for crit, and crits deal... Uh, crits have 15% chance to deal double damage. Why 15? Because we have three pressure points. Okay, what else? Um, for the normal jewels, there's just like crit multi, and I have reduced mana cost of skills on one, which combined with this helps me sustain my mana. If you don't want this, you can path this way and take Dreamer, which is 10% reduced mana cost of skills, which again will help you sustain mana. For the other one, I have Crit Multi, Crit Multi for spells, Attack Speed, and ES. And uh, this one I have Strength because I'm missing Attributes, uh, Attack Speed, Attack Speed, and Crit Multi. Now, why Attack Speed? Because with the amount of CDR that we have... Um, it is e it, you can push up to 10.10 .10 attacks per second. Uh, I don't have 10.10 .10 because, believe it or not, attack speed is hard to get that high amount of attack speed. So at the moment, I think I'm like 9.2 or 9.15 attacks per second, which is not bad, but imagine getting 10. That would be fucking amazing. So, yeah. The main things you want in your rare jewels is... Attributes that you're missing because you're gonna miss need a lot of attributes because this build is very dex dependent That's what I said like this would have accuracy or dex in the suffix It would be great if this would have dex or accuracy in the suffix It would be great like the same for this and stuff like that. You're gonna need a lot of dex So try to get dex whatever you can so yeah, you want dex attack speed and a lot of crit multi and percent es where you can uh, okay, for the masteries, we are shock immune while at maximum power charges, which is 90% of the time. We are cold immune, chill immune, freeze immune from our ascendancy. And I'm currently working on getting ignite immune from um, a reduced effect of ignite. I have one somewhere. I don't? Am I dreaming? Oh, reduced, 15% reduced Ignite duration or whatever. But I'm trying to get the uh, reduced effect of Ignite on you or chance to avoid being ignited. Combined with the Pantheon, less duration of Ignite. So you need, I need four jewels with less duration of Ignite and then Ignite will do, won't do anything. Okay. And one more jewel here, a Replica on Conqueror's Efficiency. And yeah. I think that's it about the jewels. The POB will be in the description, so you can check that out. You can inspect it as much as you want. About the masteries, I took here plus three levels of crit, 30% life reservation efficiency of skills, 15% uh, increased mana reservation efficiency of skills, and the shock immunity for maximum power charges. Now, this is like all customizable, but I really, you, you need this, you need this, and you need this. Now, when I get another level or two, I'm probably get gonna get the 25% critical strike multiplied against unique enemies. And over here, just a little bit more survivability, 1% uh, of elemental damage is le leached as energy shield. That's gonna be what I plan to do. Okay, so that's about it, the tree. Let's go into the POB real quick. Uh, this is not the one, let me import it real quick again for you guys so you don't see, you see how I'm like, like the accurate one, right? Here we go. This is the one, okay? So, as you can see, my Cyclone it has a 7.6 attacks per second, 100% chance to hit, and crit chance is 74.87 with nothing. This is a fresh import, so it's nothing, right? No flash, no nothing. The moment I take power charges, I am crit capped, which is amazing. You don't need Bottle of Fate. You don't need, like, anything this does nothing for me this does nothing right i need to replace that at some point so let's put this here so uh low life obviously because we're low life but you need, don't need to take this because it's already calculating you as low life because you have pain attunement okay so we have power charges we have onslaught from the flask we have tailwind from the boost because we're creating all the time and um what else let me see here is the enemy chilled? Yes, we always chill. Is the enemy shocked? Yes, from the skitterbots. Uh, and that's about it. And Cyrus damage is like 6.2 million. But you apply exposure, which is like another bit, uh, bit of damage. 
I think. I maybe not. Okay, anyway. Uh Blood Sand, you wanna be in Blood Sand for uh, single target. And what else am I missing? Channeling Cyclone, yep. I think that would be I think about it. Like no cheesing, like 6.2 million. But like I said, once I get the um, the plus two, if I change increase critical uh, damage with awaken added cold, it goes 6.2. And the best part is, uh, if you get uh, Aspect of the Spider, which I've been talking about for quite a while now, like, for example, uh, let's see, Grants level 20 Aspect of the Spider skill. This is also a big, big, big DPS increase. So you want to have this somehow. I haven't figured out how. If you do this, it's like 7.2, which is really good. The damage uh, for clearing is perfectly fine. You won't have any issue clearing. Like I'm getting to 150 to 200, maybe sometimes even 300 stacks of Scourge. Uh, so it is pretty solid. The freeze and the blind save you a lot. And um, yeah, there's room for improvements. If I update something in the POB, in the actual build in the game, I will update the POB in the description and I will pin a comment. So yeah. That's about it for this build. It's gonna be it's a long one. Uh thank you for watching. Very much I do appreciate it. I stream almost every day on twitch.tv forward slash Dante00151. Uh the link will be in the description. Feel free to drop a follow. I will appreciate it. Uh I also have a little Discord where you can join. Again, the link will be down below. And uh yeah, please like, comment, subscribe. It will help the channel a lot and uh it will help me to make future videos. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this was informative. And until next time, boys, stay safe.